so there's actually a lot going on in this relatively simple question. You need to know your nomenclature. You need to know your reactions. You need to know stoichiometry and limiting reactants. And you need to know percent yield. So we're going to go through all of that in hopefully a relatively quick manner. I don't want to rush, though. Um, so the question I have rewritten here um, on my work that I'm going to share. And the question is, what is the percent yield of a reactant? of a reaction between, and then it gives you two amounts of two reactants. And um, we know the reactants because it's a reaction between these things. And we can see that we've been given 25 milliliters of 0.541 molar silver nitrate. Uh, now 25 milliliters is a volume, and then the 0.541 molar is a concentration. Um, and then silver nitrate is AgNO3. This is where knowing your nomenclature comes in. It's a one-to-one -one ratio between the plus one silver ions and the minus one nitrate ions. Um, and then it tells you we also have 10 milliliters of three molar hydrobromic acid. They were nice and gave you the formula there as HBr. And then it says, what is the percent yield if 1.31 grams of silver bromide are produced? Now, silver bromide, uh, I'm going to skip ahead real quick, is AGBR. So we'll come back to that. Um, so there's two things we need to recognize here. One is it's asking for a percent yield, and we need to figure out what that is. And two, there's a reaction, so we need to figure out what that is. First, percent yield. Percent yield is the formula written right here. It is the experimental yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100%. Well, great. What do those mean? So an experimental yield is the amount you get from an experiment. That means I did an experiment, threw some things in a beaker, there was an explosion, and then my product is here, and this is what I have. That's an experimental yield. A theoretical yield is, okay, before I do the experiment, I have these amounts of reactants. What's the maximum amount of product I could make if everything went perfectly? That would be a theoretical yield. If you are given a problem to work on paper and you're not in a lab, the experimental yield will always be given to you because you're not actually doing an experiment. The problem tells you what happened in the experiment. So this number here, the 1.31 grams of silver bromide, that's an experimental yield. This will always be given to you in these types of questions. The theoretical yield, that's what we need to calculate. So the theoretical yield is the maximum amount we could make given these reactants. Hmm, that sounds a lot like something I've heard about before in chemistry. We'll come back to that. Um, so we've got our experimental yield is 1.31. We just need to solve for the theoretical yield. So that's the first part. Second part, what is the reaction that's going on? So I'll try not to scroll down too far. Here's the reaction, and this is where knowing your reactions is important. So I've got silver nitrate plus hydrobromic acid, the two things I was given. Now this is going to be a double replacement reaction where my positive cations and my, let's switch to blue, negative anions are going to switch places with each other. So it's important that you know that this is the reaction that's going on. Um, not super important in this question, but more tricky questions with uh, different ions could be harder. So this positive will pair up with that negative, and then this negative will pair up with that positive. And that will give you these products. This is nitric acid and silver bromide. Now we don't really care about the nitric acid, so we can kind of ignore him, but the silver bromide is something we're concerned about. Notice, by the way, that this is a balanced equation. So everything's in a one-to-one -one ratio. That'll be important in a sec. So finally, we can answer the question, how much silver bromide can we make from the amount of silver nitrate and hydrobromic acid that we started with? I don't know if you can see my pen, by the way. Um, you might not be able to, so I'm sorry, I'm gesturing with it on the screen. So we need to figure out from these quantities, how much can I produce? This should sound a lot like a theoretical, or sorry, a, um, a limiting reactant problem to you. If I've got two amounts of two reactants, and they're reacting together, it's guaranteed to be a limiting reactant problem. So I need to see which one I have the least of in this one-to-one -one ratio. So we'll start with silver nitrate. I just take the 25 milliliters. I'm going to convert that to liters. 
because my concentration is in moles per liter. Um, so I've got 0 0.541 moles per liter. And when I do that multiplication, you can see my milliliters have canceled and my liters have canceled. And that gives me a total amount of 0 0.0135 moles of silver nitrate. I do the exact same thing with my hydrobromic acid and I get 0 0.0300 moles of hydrobromic acid. Since this is a one-to-one -one ratio, this means I'm going to run out of my silver nitrate before I run out of my HBr. That means silver nitrate is the limiting reactant in this problem. So we can ignore the HBr now, and we can carry out our calculation by saying, how much silver bromide can we make from this amount of silver nitrate? And so finally, we can see down here at the bottom, I take that 0 0.0135 moles of silver nitrate I just calculated. I use the one-to-one -one ratio, and that's where this is important again, from my balance equation that I kind of marked up here. Remember, this was a one-to-one -one ratio. Oops, sorry. Um, and then I multiply by the molar mass of silver bromide. I got this from the periodic table, mass of silver plus mass of bromine. Um, and that gives me 2.53 grams of silver bromide. Now, a lot of students would box this answer and be done, say, boom, got the answer. But remember, we don't care how much we got. We care about the percent yield. What we've just calculated is the theoretical yield. So our very last step is going to say that the percent yield equals our experimental yield, which you'll remember was given, divided by our theoretical yield, which we just calculated, times 100%. And then we finally have 51.8%. Now, there's a, what this means is about 50% of what, – well, what this means is we made 50% of the silver bromide that we could have made. That means about half of the silver bromide we could have made wasn't made. And this could happen because we had some contamination or we lost some of our reactants during the reaction. They spilled or something. Or maybe the reaction just didn't go to completion. Something stopped it. Um, but all that is to say that this is the answer that we're looking for.